I want to pick up on, on a couple of things Derek came up with. 1719 and hatred for Edmund. Which one of you well, wants to start? 1719 is the year that John Flamsteed, and of course it's his house, he died on the 31st of December 1719. He's picked up on, on John, and there were actually at least four Johns. Where did he die, though? He didn't die there, he died at Burstow um, in Essex. Nothing, right. nothing to do whatsoever with Derby at all. He mentions some ledgers, which is very interesting because John Flamsteed had serious problems with a book that he wrote, but not there, called The True and Apparent Diameters of All the Planets. And it was pinched by Isaac Newton and also, Richard? By Edmund Haley. Um, I was. By Edmund Haley. Edmund Haley was uh, an astronomer, uh, Haley's Comet's name for him. He actually succeeded John Flamsteed as the Royal Obs uh, Astronomer. And uh, there was a lot of animosity between the two of them. Uh, for some reason, uh, personality clash, but probably a lot of professional jealousy as well, so he did have a dislike for him. And another very interesting fact that very few people know, Stephen Flamsteed, who was John Flamsteed's dad, who lived there, of course, was a maltster. And did Derek not mention Yes, he did. I mean, uh, Derek said unspeakable things happened here. Father didn't want him to go to university, I think, was what we discussed yeah. about. But I think Derek came up with that stuff. So what you're saying is this hatred for Edmund was, Edmund was a rival to him, and may well have taken those ledgers? Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't say it was a, it was a hatred. It was certainly a dislike. No, as a Derek professional. said hatred for Edmund. He said hatred, yeah. It, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't as defined as a hatred. And it, it was, wasn't at that house, of course. Yeah, I mean, it was all in London. I mean, that's the thing to make clear. This was all in London. Well, let's ask Matthew what he makes of that. You know, Derek has never been there before. John, the name John, okay, not very impressed by that. But this idea of hatred for Edmund, uh, the protective of the ledgers, 1719, and the fact that the guys... Uh, as Kieran said, weren't having auditory hallucinations, they all heard something. Can you put that together? Well, yeah, in terms of the information being given, I think now we're going beyond than just simply the name of the name, John. That's not surprising, you know, it's John Flamsteed's house. Um, I think the information that's being said is kind of very specific, and it suggests then that Derek's on form. Again, I'm not necessarily convinced that he's got it through, through paranormal means. That's one possible interpretation. But at the very least, he suggests he's on form. We may see more information tonight, which suggests, perhaps more convincingly, that he, he, you know, he couldn't have picked up through any normal means. Quite good, though. Good start. OK, good start. Good start. Thank you very much. Right, Julian, what are people saying at home? Well, David, I've had this story in front of me for a few minutes, actually, before Derek said Edmund. But listen to this. Edmund Richardson is alone in his house watching the show, and he clearly heard someone say, Edmund, Edmund, behind him. When he turned round... There's no one there. That is quite extraordinary. That was phoned in a little bit earlier. More reports coming of people feeling very cold, such as Robin, who started to get chills and goosebumps, even though she's sitting in front of a fire tonight. And as ever on Most Haunted, people ring in with strange happenings in their homes. Electrical objects seem to be turning themselves on and off, electricity cutting out. And, of course, we must repeat our competition so people can be here <laughs> tonight on Monday night. We've got four pairs of tickets to come and see the show. You could be here in the audience. And as I said earlier, 50,000 people want to be at the show, so this is your chance. Four all pairs of tickets that we'll, we'll uh, pull out at random later. Where does Derek Acora come from? Quiet in the audience. A, is it London? B, Liverpool? C, Lithuania? Those are the choices. Text your, <laughs> text your answer to haunted space comp space A, B or C, your answer, space your name and the number 80088. Fantastic. So that will be great. We'll see you on Monday night. Ah, good. And get those entries coming in. And of course, don't forget, you can also ring us as well. 08712 We want to hear your stories, your paranormal stories at home, but also if you have stories about Derby in particular, maybe about John Flamsteed's house, or maybe about some of those other locations that we're going to investigate tonight. The night is young. There's so much more to come. We'll see you in a few minutes after this break. is Most Haunted Live. We're here till midnight tonight and indeed over the next two days. Now, earlier this week, our investigation unit held a vigil at Arbor Low. Now, that's known 
as the Stonehenge of the North. It's situated on land where there's been a lot of reported paranormal activity. And one of our viewers, Vince Draper, he was there, and he's also here in the audience tonight. We'll be speaking to him in just a bit. That's all still to come. Now, what they found was extraordinary. Take a look. I can honestly say that this is probably the scariest place in the whole of Derbyshire. This is Arbor Low, the Temple of the Sun. This is a place of earth energy. It's crisscrossed with ley lines. And in the 1970s, a group called the Dragon Project did some research here and found that at certain times of the year, the actual stones were emanating ultrasounds and also electromagnetic signals. And of course, at night, the locals will never go near this place. There is reported to be what's known as a boggart, which is a mischievous spirit that wanders around the area. Not only that, but they also believe that this is a place that attracts UFOs and extraterrestrials. And of course, being here at this time of year, the time of summer solstice, it's going to be extremely interesting to see just what the investigators will come up with. Where, where would you like to sort of, is there a particular area you want to stand? Because I think we're right in the centre of the stone circle mm -hmm. while looking at it. Is mm -hmm. there any particular? Well, we actually walk past, um, I don't know how I can describe it, a very large, flattish yeah. stone going back there. When I walk past that area, um, I, I got a few um, mind's eye um, uh, experiences, mm. uh, the energies that were being thrown out. So if we walk back, maybe they will be, uh, will come back again. Um, I can't believe how quiet it is. Yeah. You can hear the odd, odd cow, can't you? But there's supposed to be wild cats here as well, aren't yes. there? Yes. Yeah, there are. Well, nice. they say there are, but. Um. Have you ever, have you experienced or seen anything? Have you been here before? Then? Uh, I've, I've walked here during the day, but I've never experienced anything. Right. Like I say. It's no. just unnaturally quiet. Isn't it, it is. Yeah. This area. Here. This is the area. Yeah. yeah. As we walk past. I, I don't know why, but just psychically, if not maybe spiritually as well, again that atmosphere is coming out at me. Now this could be, I feel probably residual, it's not um, activity as such, mm. but I seem to be very strongly, uh, earlier on I was getting this like chanting, but a group chanting, and then as we come past here, I seem to have one solitary figure, that one solitary figure seems to be, and the, the, I'm just copying what the energy is telling me mm -hmm. he's doing, and he's looking up like this up into the skies, and it's like as if he's sending, it's, again, he's sending out a chant, sending out a chant, and then I saw, or I was allowed to see, like an eclipse, mm -hmm. and it went dark and then it started to open up again and the light came to this figure and it was a chant and the only way I can describe it, I've not come across this before ever, Ivy. and what I feel this is, is that there's a, a person, the head of a group of souls, a group of people who are chanting to the skies. Who's they? I feel, I feel this is a group of people that I've got, um, I've never firmly had proof even spiritually, um, or a belief of what we call extraterrestrial. Right. Mm -hmm. However, standing here, these energies that are thrown out, the residual energies, tell me that this one single one, if not the whole group, are waiting, waiting for arrival or wishing an arrival, and it's coming from up there. And this is, I've got to say, thank you, Sam, this is not burial. Right. It is not discount the burial. There's not burial here. This is all to go up. So you're saying that this spirit, the, the, this this energy that you're picking up, is of a soul who do, he's not from he, this planet. He's not from here. Right. So is it mediumship? Are you picking up a, a discarnate entity? Or? Yes. Right. I, I pick up his energy because I feel he does walk here, um, in that what we call spirit body, and even he not being from here, would be of spirit body, but of progressed body, right. progressed spirit body. You see, I, okay. do, I do know that a lot of lights have been seen around Arbolo, a heck of a lot of lights. I yeah. think they're the energies of this group of people. I feel he, he, he promised, he promised these souls that were helping him a greater 
understanding a greater life when his people 